it was, I knew people made money in real estate links. So I didn't know anything about wholesale. You go down the YouTube path and you find people that have courses in education, podcasting, so you educate yourself. And like I said, when I was in trucking, I had a lot of free time. So you start learning about other things with all that free time. And like I said, the reason why I even give a lot of effort towards podcasting is because I'm a product of it. This is Henry Washington, and you're listening to the Average Joe Finances Podcast. Welcome to the Average Joe Finances Podcast. Are you trying to get out of debt? invest or just not sure where to start then this is the place for you we discuss different ways to get out of the rat race and build your wealth join us on this wild ride to financial freedom hey welcome back to the average joe finances podcast i'm your host mike cavagioni and today's guest is daniel martinez daniel super excited to have you on the show thank you so much for joining me and i just want to point out I was recently on his podcast, so go check it out on the Hive With Us podcast. It was probably the best episode he ever did. I'm just saying it was really good. Hey, Daniel, welcome to the show. Oh, welcome. I appreciate you having me on. It's always like switching back and forth with other podcast hosts just because you get a different, you get a reverb of whatever, not necessarily a reverb of the conversation, but it switches positions. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Now, roles have reversed. Now, I'm the host and you're the guest. But no, dude, I had a blast on your show. And the thing is, like, guys, if you haven't listened to it, go listen to it because it was the two of us just like having a just general conversation about everything like real estate, podcasting, just all the good stuff. So much value in that conversation. And I'm hoping that we're going to add to that value here with our conversation. Speaking of that, I want to start things off the same way I start every podcast episode. And we want to know more about you and your background. So if you could share a little bit about yourself, share your story. Who is Daniel Martinez? I've been an entrepreneur for about five years. It'll be five years in December. I used to load trucks. I did a lot sales jobs back then, door-to-door -door sales, didn't really like that. Eventually got into like transportation industry with loading trucks and then ended up moving down to Chicago from, moving down to Atlanta from Chicago and they had no snow in Atlanta. So I'm like, okay, I guess I could drive now because I, I don't want to drive in the snow with the semi truck. Kind of went down that path. I did tried in trucking for two years at that company. They trained me how to drive. And then I eventually started my own trucking company and that was my first endeavor into entrepreneurship just because I had a CDO. Like worst case scenario, I'll drive the truck and we'll figure it out. And I learned a lot of lessons through that business. I eventually came into real estate and for a data company or a data company, I provide leads for investors. So I did real estate, data, and then now I'm in software. And then it's just peeling into other layers after that now. But it's been, a, it's been an interesting journey for a long bit and still have my CDL, but I don't think I'll ever drive again. But a lot of things happen down that path. Yeah, you never know, man. Like we were just talking about that before we hit record, just about the different opportunity, not only in real estate, but business in general and how there's so much opportunity there. And I think I kind of want to preface it with the fact that with you being a podcast host as well, you probably see a lot of the same things that I see is a lot of these opportunities come because of the network that you've built with your podcast, right? You're bringing on these guests that are sharing their story, what they're doing, either in real estate or in business and other things like that. And you get to ask them the questions that you want to ask them. It's one of those selfish things that we get to do as podcast hosts. It's amazing how much you can learn just by having a podcast. So you started off, you got your CDL, you started your own trucking business, and then eventually got into like real estate data, started providing leads and stuff. I'm assuming for wholesalers and flippers. So what made you decide to transition from the trucking business to get into real estate? Man, I tell people all the time, it was out of necessity. So a lot of people, they need to pivot out of whatever they're currently doing. And it's not a bad thing, but I lost a hundred K in trucking. Wow. It wasn't really making me any money. And it was just, I was just working for free at that point and losing money. So I was pivoting to other things. And I hope it doesn't happen to real estate, but the transportation industry is over-regulated. So that everybody's in your pockets. Too much regulation, there's police tickets regular drivers like i always make the joke that the stars have to align for you to get paid in the transportation business huh. because there's so many there's so many factors that lay into each dollar you make that it's just hard to make a dollar yeah it's hard to get it back working for free is not my idea of what i want to do in business so i can see why that transition became a necessity right but why real estate in particular? It was, I knew people made money in real estate. Like I said, I didn't know anything about wholesale. You go down the YouTube path and you find people that have courses in education, podcasting. 
So you educate yourself. And like I said, when I was in trucking, I had a lot of free time. So you start learning about other things with all that free time. And like I said, the reason why I even give a lot of effort towards podcasting is because I'm a product of it. So it's like a personal note to give back to the community because I became a product of it as a whole because I used to consume so much of it back then. Yeah. Okay. I absolutely love that, Daniel, because I am the same way, right? When I first got into real estate investing, I was like, I need to learn as much as possible, as fast as possible. What's the best way to do that? And I started listening to Bigger Pockets. I started watching more YouTube stuff like Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, all those guys, right? Just consuming as much content as possible. I called myself a content sponge, right? Yeah. And I felt like that was so important in my own personal journey. And then when I started my own podcast to share what I was doing in my own like personal finance journey, I realized the value that I was getting out of it. Sure, I'm providing value to my listeners, right? And there's people that are like, oh, wow, this is great information and all of that, and which is great. And I love that I'm able to make an impact on people. But at the same time, I was able to learn so much more and build my network to the point where like I get deal like in my inbox, I get deal flow, like something serious. It's crazy. I get emails all the time with things that are coming up, new business opportunities, everything, man, you name it. I get it in my inbox and I absolutely love that. And I have the choice to sit in here and say, yep, nope, not for, Ooh, this one might be something interesting to take a look at. Right. Uh, but that's one of the beautiful things about building a network and how my podcast helped me actually get there. Are, are you, have you had a similar experience with your podcast? I know you've, act, you've actually been podcasting, I think a little bit less time than me, but you have way more episodes than me because you're out there just crushing it in the podcast world and interviewing a bunch of people, man. And I think that's absolutely amazing. So what are some of the side benefits that you've gotten out of that? A lot of it is private capital. We've been trying to source private capital. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's one of those things. If you get private capital, that's like the one thing that really hinders a lot of investors from growing. So we've been trying to really dig into private capital and proper placing that into proper transactions. That way everybody wins. But it's just been the biggest thing that I've seen benefit from is just the conversations, man. You talked to, I, we had an interview, we interviewed Tim Bratz, we interviewed some C-level big executives already. And I'm like, man, this is priceless information. I actually DM the guy and he charges like $25,000 to speak with them for half a day and they're we're on the calendar to speak. So I'm like stuff like that, like they'll do, they'll do a podcast for free, but if you come in through the other entrance, they're going to charge you and they're going to tax yeah. you. So it really shows the information that they provide and that they're willing to give to you freely just because you provide value to them as well. Yeah. Because you know, when somebody goes on a podcast, they get to promote themselves. Right. And that's one of the beautiful things about it is you get to bring people on and you're not paying, right? But they get to promote themselves. And at the same time, you get to learn from them and ask them the questions that you want to ask them. Again, like I said, it's like one of those selfish things that you get to do as a podcast host. And I absolutely love that. I've had people on my show that charge thousands of dollars for an hour of their time. And here I am getting to pick their brain for an hour and get a good understanding of how they did what they did and learning about their style and everything. And I'm like, this is freaking awesome. And then not only that, but not only did I get to do that and pick their brain, but I get to provide that value to my audience for free. So enjoy. That's one of the beautiful things about it that I love so much, man. And really glad you brought that up. Now, one of the things that you said that you've been able to do with this is raise private capital. And I don't think people realize the just how powerful that is by building up a network to the point where you can actually raise enough private capital for businesses for real estate deals or anything like that, that carries a lot of weight. What are some of the things, and this is one of those selfish questions, right? That I'm going to ask you because I want to know for myself personally, but what are some of the things that you've done with your podcast to get it to the point where you had investors reaching out to you to say, Hey, yeah, I'm interested in providing private money for a, B, C, or D. So one of the interesting things about real estate is that if you proclaim that you're real estate, people always are looking to invest capital in other ways. So we don't need to necessarily ask for it. It's just it, people just come, hey, I have money. Can you take it and multiply it for me? Because most people have that problem. Think about this. Most entrepreneurs, they might be good at making money, but they're not good at investing it. So us being in real estate, we're the perfect vehicle for those entrepreneurs and people that listen to your show or listen to that make a lot of money. They just, hey, I need a way to invest this. 
and I just need help. Yeah, having that appropriate vehicle in place to stash their cash instead of just holding on to it and it does absolutely nothing but lose money the entire time. That's awesome, man. Now, what about you personally, like in your own personal journey towards financial freedom? What are you doing in that and how close are you or are you already at the point of reaching financial independence? So I had a conversation with this. One of my clients, I go golfing with my clients that live nearby me. And it's a cool thing that you get to do when you have clients. We had this, we literally talked about this last weekend. And it was interesting because entrepreneurship is a five and 10 year journey, but it's not necessarily about the money. It's about freedom and freedom and money aren't the same thing. And they're not the same attainable goal that happened in entrepreneurship. And we're talking about that. Like if you have regular freedom, that's freedom too not just money freedom that gets to a certain level. There's a stage that you can go through and pass through that freedom in general is priceless, that it's huge amounts of leverage that it gives you. And not having to clock in at a job is, like I said, I, luckily for me, like I've been able to do that since I've been in entrepreneurship. Even when I was in trucking, even losing money, I've been able to sustain myself. And this is something that they don't teach you is the government actually pays you to be employed, an entrepreneur. Because if you don't make enough money, they actually pay you, you still get tax refunds and all that stuff. I got the P loan and I was like, because I was a business that was affected by COVID. So the government pays you to stay in business. So you get a lot of leverage, even if you're not making a lot of money. Yeah, that's a fair point. Just being an entrepreneur in general and just having that freedom. But so actually, I want to ask you, like, what what does that mean to you? What is financial freedom to you? I think... For me, it's just having the ability to go and do what you want when you want to and having the ability to take care of your family more than you need to without having to do what everybody else does. I love that. I feel the same way. Like financial freedom to me, just get rid of the financial piece and just use the other F word, freedom. It's that independence that you have, right? That you don't have to rely on a W-2 job. You don't have to rely on being employed right? That you have enough to get by and enjoy life and get that time back. So time freedom to me is like super important. And that's why like, I love spending like my free time on things like this, on making content, having a podcast interview, and just being able to put some fantastic information out there, like what we're doing right now. So absolutely love that, man. Now, you said you've been doing this, what, you said five years since you started your entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, it'll be five years in December. Okay, fantastic. Now, you also mentioned how entrepreneurship is like a five to 10 year journey. Right? So you're always looking five, 10 years down the road. Now, I believe in real estate too. That is like the biggest thing. This is not a get rich quick thing. It's, hey, build wealth over time, but you'll be surprised how quickly you can build it in that five to 10 year period. So now that you're coming up on this five year, if you look back five years ago and reflect on just what you've done on your journey so far, is there anything that you would have changed during your journey to maybe that would have accelerated you a little faster or maybe stuff that you would have scaled back on, anything like that? That is such a great question. And the reason why it's such a great question is because I like the path I took and I like the path it's taken me because- I have learned the lessons that I needed to when I needed to learn them. And a lot of people, they think, oh, I'm going to make it in a year. I'm going to make it in two years. And like, you shouldn't have that thought process because sometimes you need to get hit in the face a few times. Because when you're dealing with bigger issues and bigger problems, if you wouldn't go, if you didn't take those L's early, it might bankrupt you. I love that, man. It's so crazy that how that works though, but put in the reps, put in the work, put in the time, put in the five, 10 years, put in the time. And you'll be better off for it going to that path. Yeah, Dude, I absolutely love that answer because it's one of the things that we talk about, whether you're an entrepreneur, investing in real estate, whatever it is that you're doing, right? If you're investing in real estate, you're an entrepreneur, right? But as you're doing this, a lot of people are like, what are some of the things I should avoid and everything like that? It's great because you can listen to podcasts like this. You can hear other people's stories, go read it on forums. You can watch some YouTube videos about mistakes that people have made so you can avoid those. But you're not going to avoid every single mistake. It's bound to happen. You're going to have hiccups in your journey, right? What matters is what you do on the backside of that, right? It's not about, well, I'm trying to avoid. You could be as risk adverse as you want, but you know what? There's always risk. There's always a possibility that something can happen. And when those things do happen, how do you react? How do you respond? That's the important part. And if there's anything that you could take away from any of these pieces of content that you've learned from is 
Look at what those entrepreneurs did after that mistake, after that financial hardship, after everything was said and done. It's that build back. It's that that coming back from financial hardship or mistake that will make or break you, right? And in this industry, we tend to call that an expensive education. You have something yeah. in real estate that happens, it's an education piece because guess what? You learned your lesson. You don't want that to happen again. So now you're going to do what you have to do to avoid that situation from happening. I think that's super important. And I'm, I really appreciate that you brought it up that way because it really truly is important to get those punches in the face and take those L's, as you said, right? Because it's going to build your character and it's going to build your entrepreneurial profile, right? It's going to mold you into the business person that you are. So I think that's well, one thing I'll important. say is that like, you think every, every wants to be Elon Musk, but you don't understand the pressure he deals with on the daily. You don't think he's taking multiple L's and losses and be built that strength. Think of it as a muscle. The more L's you take, the more punches in the face you get, the more, you know, to dodge it, take a left, take a right. So you got to really build that strength up just to even deal with the pressure of bigger business. And there's levels to bigger business. People think, Oh, I want to make a hundred grand my first year in business. Yeah, it's a hundred thousand dollar problem, but wait till you get million dollar problems. They just get bigger and bigger. And it's not the problems to go away, they just get bigger. Yeah. The problems just get more zeros added to them as you scale and expand and get more success, become more successful. But I'm glad you bring that up because if you look at Elon Musk early on and some of the, the businesses that he started, there's been many business failures. And that's the pe the part that people don't see. They're like, oh, look, look at what he's doing with Tesla. And oh, he started off in PayPal. And look what PayPal was garbage for a while. And he took a lot of punches in the face with that. And a lot of people don't look at the actual, the negative stuff, right? They're just like, oh, look, he's like the richest man in the world. And look what he's doing. And this shooting rockets up into space. And he's, he wants to colonize Mars and blah, blah, blah. Don't forget all the other stuff that happened too, right? There's a lot of mistakes that happen along that process, but it's how he recovered and picked himself up after those mistakes. That's what made him accelerate and become so successful. And when I think about a lot of the naysayers out there that that hate on success and all that other stuff, it's, you know what? It's probably because you tried, you made that mistake, and then you gave up. That's a lot of the people that say, I tried to run a business, so it just didn't work out. They're the ones who quit. They gave up because it was too much. The pressure was too much. They couldn't handle it. And that's okay if that's you, right? Find something that works, that'll work for you. But a lot of times the people that are going to go out and become really successful in life are the ones that are willing to get those bumps and bruises out of the way. And even after they've successfully passed, that's still be willing to get punched in the face when the time comes because it's going to happen again. And as long as you understand that, you can just keep gearing yourself towards down that successful path. So, I don't know. Am I crazy I'm, I'm, here or what? No, you're not. And it's, a, it's so funny because I love Twitter. If you don't love Twitter, go check it out. Just you gotta I love hate relationship with Twitter. It's a, it's a love-hate relationship, but you got to follow the right people on Twitter. So I follow a guy named Ed Lattimore. He's a boxer, ex-boxer. He tweeted this morning, the shame is in quitting, not losing. And he tweeted that this morning. Oh, I like that. I the like shame that is a lot. Quitting. And I posted it in my story. So, That's going to be the uh, name of this Lattimore. podcast episode, right? There. Yeah, it's crazy. And the shame is in quitting, not losing. I'll say that again. But I actually, he was such an inspiration for me that I DM'd him on Twitter, had him on the podcast, and we had like an hour and a half show. And it was one of the best episodes because he's a ex boxer and he's just, he boxed, he went like 16 and two or something like that. And he's a writer. He writes now. So he does a lot of his online stuff and he's always like spitting a good game. So like you don't, you never know where you're going to get a game from, but you got to pay attention to all the game that you get. Cause like I said, your whole thing right there is if you quit, you're a loser. But if you lose and keep on moving, it's another opportunity for a win. Hey everyone, Mike with Average Joe Finances. The Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, aka RubeCon, is on for 2023. It'll be May 4th through the 6th in Phoenix, Arizona at the Sheraton Downtown. I'll be speaking again this year and I want to see you there. This year I'm doing two speaking events, one about growing your investor network through podcasting and the other is about investing while in the military. We have some great speakers lined up so you don't want to miss this conference. Visit Average JoeFinances.com slash RubeCon, R-E-W-B-C-O-N, or the link in the notes below and use promo code Mike for discounted tickets. See you there.
Are you a business owner that constantly struggles with your CRM system and keeping in touch with clients? Well, let me tell you about the CRM system that I personally use. It's called HiveMind CRM, and I'm telling you it's been a fantastic addition to my tool belt as a real estate investor, as a business owner, and as a financial coach. Go check it out at averagejoefinances.com slash CRM. You're gonna love it. Again, that's averagejoefinances.com slash CRM. Let's get back to today's episode. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I freaking love that. And I also love that you said that when you had him on your podcast, it was one of your best episodes because you realized that the one that we had together was the best one. So that's awesome. But no, man, seriously, like that that is probably one of the best quotes I've heard in a really long, and I'm going to share that with you. I, I'm going to go follow him just because of that. So I'm going to go look him up after this because that is the type of stuff that you need in your life. You need that type of inspiration. There's a lot of things out there that that make you feel good and that are inspirational and all that. but sometimes there's no context or meaning behind it. It's just like a pick me up. Oh, somebody did a good deed for somebody. That's great. But when you have something like that, that has meaning behind it, it's something that you can apply to your life and actually it make a difference in your life. So I really appreciate that you shared that with me. And I'm glad that he tweeted that this morning so we can get that out here on this episode. That's awesome. That's why you were talking. I'm like, I know I felt distracted, but I'm like, I got to say this because this was such a dope tweet this morning. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure. All right, cool. Yeah, so speaking of that with like, just positive influences in life. Do you have specifically like any role models or positive influences that have helped shape you down your path as an entrepreneur? Man, too many people. When you get into this business, find a mentor. Mentors are the heck. And what's crazy about mentors, and this is another tweet that I think he's tweeted too. I think it was today, same at Lattimore. He's on fire today. He says that most of your teachers and mentors, if you surpass them, they taught you well. Man, I love that. It, it reminds me of this picture that I've seen a lot that was turned into a meme on social media. It's a picture of, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm an 80s baby. That was a big part of my life when I was a kid. But there was a picture that was going around and I thought it was just absolutely awesome where, oh my God, oh my goodness, I'm having a brain fart for the, uh, the rat sensei's name. Master Splinter. Master Splinter. That's right. So Splinter was, it was a picture of him like with the turtles, very young, like guiding them. And then later on in life, it shows him as older and frail and the turtles like guiding him. Like when you said that's the first picture that happened in my mind, it's, you know, when the student becomes the master, right? Oh, you've learned well, grasshopper type deal. And that is absolutely the goal that everyone should be striving for. If you're in a an area where you're teaching other people or you're mentoring other people or coaching other people, your end goal should be to make sure the person becomes better than you. Because if that is your mission and that is what you're trying to do, you're going to give them the best goal, advice and motivation and inspiration to actually do that. So as long as I just retired after 20 years in the Navy, and that was one of the biggest things for me as a leader when I got more senior in the Navy is I wanted to make sure that I showed some of these young sailors that here's what I did to be successful in the Navy. And here's how you could step it up a notch. And I want you to do better than me. I want you to retire at a higher rank than I did because that is important to me. And when you have somebody like that, and I've had mentors like that in my life that have helped me, it really makes a difference. So intent matters. That's I think that's the biggest thing that I want to take out of that is how your intention really matters. Yeah. And like I said, for me, it's been, it's always been somebody at different stages of my life. Like my dad was probably a leader. And then my dad just passed away last year. So I'm, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. No. And I appreciate the, uh, the transparency. There's a lot of people that you can have in your life, but when it's your family, your father, and somebody that really inspired you, those losses are very tough, but he obviously did something right because you are very successful in life. It's the reason why you're on my show right now, man, because I love what you're doing. I'm glad we got connected. So you definitely have some fantastic mentors in your life. Yeah, one thing my dad taught me, he taught me that my dad came from Mexico. So he told me that he told me to work with your head because if you work with your back, you can only do it for so long. I absolutely love that, man. Your brain can take a beating when it comes to intellectual stuff. Like when, as you're learning, you can constantly learn and learn and learn and learn, but you're back over time, man. It's going to go out. 
even if you're lifting with your legs and you're using other muscles, man, that back can only take so much stress as you get older in life. That age hits a lot of times, man, it, you're just going to get worn out. I can tell you after 20 years in the Navy, man, my back is shot, but I've learned so much over that time period and I'm continuing to learn so much more. So that is a fantastic quote, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. And then when I got into business, I met, when I got into trucking, I met a mentor of mine and now I'm trying to get him into real estate. So it's like an interesting path. And I told him when I left trucking, I was like, Hey, when I get it into real estate, when I figure this out, you're coming with me. So now he's helping out with the software side. I'm trying to introduce him to other things just because it was like, he's been, he's been in transportation for just so long. So it's one of those things where I'm trying to get him on transportation because I've been in there and I'm good. Yeah. That's awesome. Actually, that kind of goes back to that meme I was just describing with Splinter and the Turtles. It's you went up to him or I'll even use a Star Wars reference, right? Cause I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You were his Padawan and now you've become the master and you're bringing him over, I guess, to the dark side. Right. But yeah, man, that's good stuff. And that's one of those things that I really like about you too, man, is that again, you're a very, very genuine person. You could have easily just learned as much as you could from him, did your business and said, ah, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take this and I'm going to go into real estate and this isn't for me, but no, you went back to him and dude, you really helped me out. I want to help you out. And that's the type of people you want to surround yourself with, the people that are going to give back. And I think that's super important. What you're doing with your real estate data, with your company, right, with Hivemind, and what you're doing with your podcast and giving back to the community, that is something that that is worth more than any dollar amount you could put into it, right? Because that knowledge can change someone's life to the point of millions. And yeah. I think that's huge, man. And that's why I go so hard into it, just because if you have conversations, the meaningful conversations, it's all fine and dandy. But if, if you can't find a way to share or, or have it out there forever where it can't help the masses, what's the point of the conversation? Yeah. So it, it's just crazy. Like me and my partner, I just went to San Antonio last week. And I was like, hey, he was talking to one of our clients and he sold them something. Bro, dude, we need to talk about that when we get back to your house. He's like, dude, let's talk about it right now. So we literally recorded a podcast on the way back to his house. And that's when we got a few episodes. So we released two episodes like that. And it was just such a meaningful conversation because we were talking about the power of connection. Yeah. Oh, the power of connection is awesome, man. And that's why that's why I try not to like really script my podcast episodes, man. I want to have a genuine conversation with my guests because you get so much more out of that. And there's so much more value added because both of you can relax and just have a conversation like what we're doing here. I think I was able to extract more valuable data from you just by sitting down and having just talking like two dudes, right? Having a cup of coffee or a beer or something, just talking. And man, I mean, that it just adds value. I got to really understand what it is, what drove you to go from the transportation industry into real estate and why you're so passionate about that. Those are the type of golden nuggets that people will carry with them as they go on their investing and financial freedom journey. So I definitely appreciate that, bro. Yeah. Like I said, I like it because it's just, there's always meaningful conversations you're going to have with 100%. at different points and you don't ever know what actually is going to be talked about. Yeah. That, you asked me on this one, it's like, oh, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. Let's talk. Yeah. Hey, same way when I went on your show, man, we were just like, hey, what are we going to talk about? And we just, as we went on, we figured it out. We talked about podcasting and real estate. So I love that, man. So actually I do though have some set questions I do want to ask you in this. I want to transition this to that. It's something that we call the final round. And I'm going to ask you the same four questions that I ask everybody that comes on the show. Sure. If you're ready to go, we'll get that party started. Let's go. Let's go. Hit me. All right, Daniel. I don't want to hit you, man. I don't want to hit you. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Hey, the first one is, what's the biggest mistake you've ever made in real estate or in business? In real estate or business, I would think it's not pivoting sooner. I wish I would have pivoted sooner out of my trucking business. A lot of it is just you don't really know. You don't really know what's going to come of it. And when my, my mentor in the trucking business, he told me, if you don't go all in right now, there's always going to be that doubt that you didn't go all in. So I think it's follow through and going to the end. And I think it was like one thing I was like, hey, and that's one thing I did do with trucking. I took it to always the end where I didn't have any other choice out of it, but I'm glad I went through all of that. It was just part of what looking back was like, I wish I would have done it sooner, but I did learn a lot from doing that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you think like part of that might've been just like, kind of like a pride thing. I started this. I want to finish it. I feel like that's what I would struggle with. Man, I, I, I don't want was, to feel like I didn't make it. And this is for everybody here too. Like my family called and like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Because like entrepreneurship is not easy. And I told my mom, I was like, my mom, she asked me, she called me concerned. I was like, I'm not depressed. Like people in my situation, 
that couldn't handle what I was going through would probably be depressed and suicidal and drinking a lot. And I'm not any of those right now, so I'm perfectly fine. And it's one of those things, it's not pretty. It's not pretty when you're on the other side of stress, whatever that comes in. Yeah. And and I'm sure you've dealt with like military and veterans and stuff like that, seeing time. And it's just like, all this is stress and it's not good for you. And you got to find a way to deal with it and hold on. hundred percent. Yeah. I've seen it both in the military and I've seen it with my business, man. Like it, like you said, being an entrepreneur, it's not easy. And a lot of times people see the sunny side of it. You don't see those crappy rainy days that always happen. So again, Your transparency, man, I appreciate that because I think people need to understand both sides, right? You're going to have good days. You're going to have really shitty days. So it's all about, again, when you take the, again, going back to when you take those L's, it's all about how you respond to those crappy days and how you bounce back from it. I think that's huge, man. So the next question is going to tie into this and that what is something that you've learned that you wish you knew when you first started? That there isn't a wrong way. And what I mean by that is that everybody thinks there's only one way to go a certain direction. And there is no wrong way. If you do take a direction, it's not necessarily wrong, but there could be good and a solution that can be made even going the wrong way. There's no wrong way. Okay. I love that, man, because there's going to be lessons learned no matter what you do. And if you do something that you think uh, might have been wrong, you're going to learn something from that. So it is the right thing that you needed to do. Ah, I love that, man. So much value out of this. Okay. The next question again ties into this. And you, Daniel, have any tips or tricks that you would recommend to someone that is just getting started today? Build a team, systematize, make as much as you can. It gets easier the bigger you get. And staying small might not always be the best solution. I love that. I love that. It's one of those things. And I think I talked about this when I was a guest on your show. But when I started my podcast, I felt like I had to do everything myself. I had to touch everything. And it wasn't until I outsourced my editing and it wasn't until I like started hiring assistants to help me with certain things with my social media and everything else that I realized that this is actually, as a team sport, a much better place to be than trying to do everything solo. And that's both as in real estate And also with my podcast, I would say that in any business, even if you start your own small business, having a team and having some people that that have your back will help you scale so much faster than trying to do everything yourself. Sure, you can be a solo person and go invest in real estate and do everything by yourself. You're going to be really stressed out. You're not going to have a lot of free time. And if you're married with kids, you might not be for long because you have to give your family that time too. There's a lot of things to consider. So Being solo is great, but this is a team sport. So build your team. I love that, man. Okay. Is there anything you want to add to that? No, I I just, it's, I went through it solo at first and now I have a team and everything is a lot. And you had your family asking if you're okay. Crazy. Yeah. Awesome, man. Okay. So I will end this with the final question of the final round and I will preface it with besides your own, but do you have a favorite business investing or real estate related book or podcast or both? I would say the book, I'm a numbers person. So I like uh, Investing in Debt by Jimmy Napier. That really helped me with like creative finance and understanding notes and stuff like that. Especially with the direction we're at with the market setting, it's probably a really good book to read if you're learning about creative stuff. I love $100 Million Offers by Alex Ramosi. That's a book I recently read this year. And it it covers a lot of stuff that I did with my agency and understanding that side of it. Traction is a really good one too. Understanding your role in the business and that you don't have to do it all. You have to find somebody that fills the other side of your business. And Traction is one of, really one of those, another good one like that. I'm not really much of a reader, but those are like The Richest Man in Babylon. It's a good book. Oh, my favorite personal finance book. And, I, I, and when you said Traction, man, I was going to like point to it back here. But that book is one of those things that actually punched me in the face and made me realize like, hey, you really need to consider what you outsource, how you outsource it, and just stop trying to do everything. That was one of those things that really helped me with that. So I'm really glad that you brought that up. That's definitely one of those must reads if you're in any type of this. It doesn't have to be real estate, just business in general. That is like a must read, 100%. Yeah. So like I said, those are all the stuff that really helped me out a lot. Like I said, and they're all different. They all helped in different ways, like different ways of business. 
Like I said, I'm not a big reader, but I need to do better. Yeah, no, I, me too. I'm not a big reader, but a couple of those books that you mentioned I read and they're fantastic. I am definitely gonna go check out Investing in Debt though. That's not one that I've read. So that's getting added to my list. Yeah, man. Okay, so that is it for the final round. Now, I kind of lied here because I do have one more question for you. And it's the most important question of all. It's not part of the final round, but it is important because people listening to this episode and saying, man, I like the vibes that I'm getting out of Mike and Daniel's conversation. I really like what Daniel's doing. I want to know more about him and his business. So where can people find that information? Do you have a website you could share with us? Any social media platforms that people could follow you on? Anything like that? Yeah. So we're Hive Mind CRM on all platforms. We have a free Facebook group called Hive Mind CRM. We have a, our software is to help people automate and delegate their business through automation. And we help all types of businesses that do that. We have a land mastermind. We actually invest in real estate land. If you're interested in that, you can actually text land to 210-972-1842 to get more interested about that. But YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, Pinterest, you name it, we're on there. And what's the name of your podcast? The podcast is called the Hive With Us Podcast Network. You can actually find it on hivewithus.com. Awesome. Hey, I want to put that out there because that it is a fantastic podcast and yours truly was on there as a guest and absolutely loved the conversation that I had and just the information that they put out. It's just generally just a fun podcast to listen to. And I do want to point out full disclosure here, specifically the HiveMind CRM is actually the CRM that I personally use. So you guys could definitely go check that out. AverageJoeFinances.com slash CRM. It'll bring you right to HiveMind. Really appreciate appreciate Daniel. This conversation was fantastic. I knew it was going to be. I just knew it from the last time we talked. So again, thank you so much. I'm going to make things very easy for everybody. Those links are going to be in the show notes. So you can go find Daniel. You can go find him on social media. You can go find the mastermind. For those of you interested in investing in land, that is one of the new hotnesses right now. So now is a good time to get in early if that's something you're interested in doing, investing in land. Daniel, again, thank you so much, man. This was fantastic. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. I don't even know what to say, man. I, I, a lot of stuff covered, a lot of stuff I never talked about, but hopefully you'll enjoy that. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And hey, to my listeners, thank you so much for joining me and our special guest, Daniel Martinez, on the Average Joe Finances podcast. Go leave us a five-star review and tell us what you liked about today's specific episode with Daniel. Aloha from Hawaii and have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for making it to the end of this episode. Greatly appreciate you being here with me today on the Average Joe Finances podcast. If you haven't done so yet, make this the episode that you go leave us a five-star rating or subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Average Joe Finances podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Have an outstanding day. Thanks for listening to the Average Joe Finances Podcast, your source for beating debt, saving money, and investing. Learn more at AverageJoeFinances.com. 